Figma. Has anybody here ever used Figma? No. Nope. You have, Aaron? Yeah. Stuart, did you say you have? I have not. You have not. Okay. A little bit. I little saw bit. I was just bought by Adobe. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to mention, I'll mention that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. It is crazy. It was really surprising. So, um, so what took me down this path? So, for the last couple months, I've been um, uh, learning Figma. And what brought me to the learning Figma was um, I often found, or in, and you, can, you guys can see if you relate to this, but I often find myself um, somewhere between stuck and spinning my wheels when I begin a project and start designing a, a site, right? So, uh one of the worst parts of the project for me is when i have an absolutely blank page <laughs> and uh, i'd rather have something to start with and then modify it you know it, it's easier to do that but but starting with an absolutely blank slate um i find difficult um you know i mean i think that's why there's so many starter templates out there in the world um but i i tend to not like to use the starter templates i like to do a custom design from scratch i i find that they they never quite are the right thing for the site that i'm doing um i often find also the starter templates um, are not really mobile optimized or responsive optimized in you know to the degree that they say they are um and so um, i tend to want to just do the site a custom design uh from from scratch so um uh but but and so and so hence i end up with this uh what you could call designer's block at the beginning of it where uh, you know i'm trying to formulate ideas i don't really have a color scheme in mind i don't have fonts or i have some things floating around in my mind but then i try them out in wordpress and it doesn't quite work out and so i was really trying looking to have some kind of a breakthrough in that realm and that led me to um i'm going to share a couple of links in the chat here um that led me to uh taking a course a design course i mean i'm a freelance web designer developer i mean i do both the design and the development side i kind of consider myself more a developer but with a pretty good eye <laughs> but yet i get stuck um on on beginning projects and so uh one of the youtubers that i follow is a guy named gary simon who's a designer he's not really a wordpress guy uh so much but he's a designer and um he always advertises his course this this course called design course simply uh uh titled <laughs> it's a design course it's called design course and um so i took it and it is done in figma and that's what brought me to to figma so it, it's been really great i'm i'm 98 of the way through the course uh the only thing remaining for me is the final project but um, uh, it's been really good and I can really see the benefit of starting with, uh, a design tool like Figma. Okay. And so I, I, if you look around, you'll find many, um, uh, YouTube videos, tutorials that'll often say, I always start in XD or I always start in Figma, you know, and I think many of us in the WordPress world skip that and go right into WordPress. You know, and um, uh, I've discovered the value of of really of, of, of um, starting in a design tool. OK, uh, and in that space, as uh, Aaron was mentioning, there, there are two major uh, packages, software packages for doing website design, and those would be Adobe XD and Figma. OK, so uh, it seems like the market is pretty evenly, fairly evenly split. I think between those two, there's probably a few other things. I think there are some free open source things um, uh, out there, but but Figma and Adobe XD are the major players. And then just about two weeks ago, um, out of the blue, I, I got the message that Adobe had acquired Figma. And so uh, now they're both under the same umbrella. I mean, I don't know what Adobe's plans are. Do they plan on merging XD and Figma into one app? Um, I have no idea. I haven't heard anything like that. But but the astounding uh, part of the whole thing was the price tag. Uh, Adobe acquired Figma for twenty billion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's really a high. I, I, I was shocked at that. I was shocked to hear they were buying them, but 20 billion is really something. Um, 
So anyway, that's that's uh, that's um, not it's super important, but it is. But if you are using Figma, it, it is now owned by or it will be soon owned by Adobe. So um, so let's jump in. Uh, do I have screen sharing uh, ability here, Aaron? I don't right now. Do I have it? And I'm going to go ahead and share my Safari screen here. All right, so here we go. So um, this is my Figma account. Figma is, there's a free tier for Figma. I believe XD has a free tier also. And this is the, I use the free um, uh, uh, version of Figma. And, um, it, you know, you really have no limits on how many files you can create. You can create tons of files as long as you do them under drafts. If you start making them into um, projects, like team projects, then you need the, the pro version, you need the paid version. But the, under drafts, if you go into the drafts uh, tab here, when you create your account uh, for, Fig, for Figma, uh, and by the way, it runs in the browser. It is an application that runs in the browser. And so you go to figma.com to uh, create an account. Okay. And so um, um, what I'm going to do here is just take you through the process and, and kind of start with a blank slate and, and how, and show you, I think you'll get a sense of how this is really helpful for brainstorming when you've got a brand new site and, and just are like, well, I don't know where to start, you know? So really what you're doing with Figma is you're just going to be, I'm just going to be drawing a site. Okay. And it's really just a drawing package. You could say similar to say Adobe Illustrator, or, you know, I use the affinity suite of, of tools. So if affinity designer is what I use, but you know, any of those packages, you could say, well, you could draw in those and you could, you could actually do that. Um, what, what, what Figma and XD and these kind of packages bring is the ability to prototype the site and to model like interactions, things like hover effects. Like when you hover over a button in Figma, you can, you can, you can model the, you know, the color change when a button, when you hover over a button. You can also model things like when I click this button, I want it to go to this other page, right? So you can do that kind of stuff. Those are things that you can't really do in those basic drawing packages. And so these, these packages are really made kind of for teams. If people are developing large websites and they want the designers to have the ability to say, to specify when you click this, here's where it goes, or here's what happens, or a menu slides off from the side. You can model all that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna get into that too much here tonight, um, but that's kind of what these things are intended for. And that's why that's much of what you get when you do the paid plan is you get more ability to collaborate with a team. Okay, so um, what I was gonna do here was just playing, do a handful of hero sections or a, um, a small fitness studio, okay? So I'm just gonna start off with a uh, blank design. So let's here, click here and go a new design file, okay? Suck a dick! And so uh, do we have a Zoom bomber there, Aaron? <laughs> ah! Okay, so... I'm going to start off here. Uh, we have a blank slate here, and what I'm going to do is do a hero section design. Okay, for a, like I said, for a fitness, a small fitness studio. So you start off with a frame. You click up here. You see this frame thing here. I'm going to click frame. Now, what happens when I click frame is I can just draw a frame of any size. So this is going to be just our canvas that we're going to work on. Um, but instead of doing that, I'm going to actually create a frame. And then if you notice here on the right side, when you, when, you, when you select a frame, you get a phone, tablet, and desktop. And we're just going to do a desktop design. And there are some standard desktop size designs here. I usually start with this one that's just called desktop, 1440 by 1024. Okay, so it draws that. So now that, that's going to be where we're going to design this hero section. Okay. And um, the other thing I like to do when I first start up here with a... Uh, 
blank canvases to put a grid in place. Okay, so if you click on this over here on the right, this layout grid and add a layout grid, okay, the plus button, and I click on the, the little uh, uh, grid here, I'm going to change it into columns, okay, because I really want to be able to align, align things on, um, you know, in, in the vertical, according to vertical lines. I'm going to choose 12 columns. I'm going to give this a little bit of margin on the sides of 120 pixels. Okay. And um, to be a little less distracting, let's make it like a gray color. Okay. Okay. So that's just kind of our layout grid. We're going to align content to these two uh, sides here. And um, um, you can also turn off this grid at any time with the little eyeball over here. Okay, because sometimes it becomes distracting. So let's start designing here. And the, I'm going to start with just a simple logo for this for this site here, and it is going to be Fit Fusion. That's the name of this business. Okay, a little text box here. Um, let's work in Poppins. Oops, I need to actually select this. Yeah, and change it to Poppins. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of make a mock um, logo here. We'll that. Let's go to 32 pixels here, and we'll call that our logo. Hey, David. Okay. Yes. Uh, what kind of uh, font catalog does it have? It has the, the Google fonts. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, it's funny. The, there is a so the, the the app runs in the browser, so you could actually go to Figma.com right now and, and create an account and just about follow along with me if you wanted to. Um, there is a downloadable version of Figma that runs in on your machine. Um, and I, you know, all the tutorials I see, no one ever uses it. To be honest with you, I believe one of the things it does is it allows you to use all the fonts that are not only the Google fonts, but the fonts that are installed on your machine. Yeah, so, but I, I've never actually messed with it. I just use the one that's running in the browser. This is just running right in Safari. Okay. Um, and so I'm just going to make that. There we go. There's our simple logo there. I'm going to start uh, with a, um, let's do a navigation here. Um, and we're not going to want it to be that size. We're going to want it to be more like, oh, let's see, let's say 24 pixels and regular. Okay. And I'm also going to make, so the width of it, like I can change the width of this, but the text inside is still the size that it is, right? Until I get to being smaller than it. You can always click this little air, this little fit, auto width fit thing here. So I always do that navigation things home let's say um, if i hold down in my, on my mac the option key and drag i create a, a, a copy of that and i'm going to say workouts again i'll hold down the option key and drag across here and do uh, about and then let's do that again again holding down the option key i'm just doing that thank you okay so that's our simple navigation there. Now, if we if we select these all, I can just do that. Um, we can go ahead and group this into a component. And when we do that, we get this option over here called auto layout. If I click on auto layout, it actually creates this um, uh, this auto layout panel in here, and you can see this 48 right here. That's the distance. It's made all of those 48 uh, pixels apart. And if I just go over and hover over, over that, I can change that and move it back and forth here really easily. Move these in and out. I'm just going to leave them around, oh, let's say around 60. Looks good. Okay. So there's our, there, there's our real quick uh, logo and navigation right there. And then I have a little bit of uh, um, content. I'm just going to make a, a real simple hero section. Some content over here on the left side, a headline, a subheadline, and a couple of call to actions, and an image on the right side. Okay, let's just start with that. Somewhat basic and boring, but then we're going to grow it from there. Okay, and I think that's where the real power of, of Figma uh, 
uh, comes in. Okay. And so if I were to create another uh, text box here, and I can say a new era of fitness. Okay. And that's my headline there. I'm going to bump this up. Let's try 48 pixels. Uh, let's go a little bigger. 48, let's try 62 pixels. And if I take this box and lengthen it a little bit, I can get those two words on the same line. <laughs> and then the other thing is I think this headline ought to be bold. Okay. And then I'm going to take this and duplicate it down. And I'm going to write in my supporting text here. I'm going to change the size of the supporting text. Let's say 32 pixels. Okay. And it's going to be regular. And it is conventional. Oops, bit fusion. Okay, and so there's that. Now that looks a little bit big to me for the uh, supporting text. I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. Let's try 28. Uh, let's try 24. The other thing is this one here, the line height looks a little bit large to me. So this is the line height setting. Um, I'm sorry, this is the line height setting. So if I bring that down, we can get that down, I'm gonna say 120%, it's probably good. That looks pretty good. Let's bring that up there. I'm gonna clean this up a little, little bit, bringing that line up. Good, so we've got a headline and, a, and, a, and some supporting text. Um, and let's build a button or two. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and take a rectangle tool here. So this is a for drawing different shapes. It defaults to a rectangle. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw a rectangle here. And then let's go ahead and put some text in it. We'll straighten it out in a moment here. And that is going to be get fit. And I'm going to auto width that. Then we can get it kind of centered here too. What's the font size on this? 24, 24. Um, oops, oops, oops. I'm going to go over here. Again, let's go ahead and get it kind of centered up. So we got a button. Something looks like a button, right? Let's go ahead and copy that. Again, if I hold down. Uh, I, I selected both of those by just um, dragging over the whole thing and then option and then drag and I get another button and this one's going to say how uh, it works. Okay. Again, I'm going to center that up. Here we go. So we're starting to look like a hero section, a rather bland hero section, but we got a hero section going on here. Okay. And then let's go ahead and um, get our image over on this side, okay? So the way we do that is we go up here and we just draw a rectangle. I'm just gonna draw a rectangle here and drag it out right to the edges. Come up a little bit here. Good. And then uh, what's the best thing about WordPress? Plugins. <laughs> Of course, there's plugins in Figma. So if you go down here to plugins, if you go here, and all I did was I, I that with that um, rectangle selected, I'm right clicking, and if I go down a little bit, there's plugins. Okay, and then you can find more plugins, and there's a whole community of plugins for Figma, tons and tons of plugins. If you just go there, you can see you can uh, get a plugin, and then just say save that plugin, add it into my into my um, uh, into my account. Right, and so um, you see I have some plugins here already. There's an Unsplash plugin. So we're gonna go there. We get into Unsplash and I'm gonna look up Workout. And um, 
let's grab this. And we are starting to get a more lively hero section here, aren't we? Okay. So um, what are we going to do here with this image? I want to get her face a little more in it, her head a little bit more in it. She's kind of cut off. So you notice over here when I have the, the rectangle selected, that image is really a background of it, right? There's a, there's a background color, which we could get rid of actually. And then there's the image. And under the image here, it has different ways of, of, of filling in that rectangle. And it's very similar to how it is, say, in CSS, when you do a background image, there's fill and cover and fit and that kind of stuff. Um, if we go to fit, you see that it, it puts it in, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't fill up the whole thing. It, is, it fits it however it has to for the aspect ratio. But I want to go to crop. Actually, I want to go back to fill. And then from there, I'm going to go to crop. Okay, and now I can actually move the image inside of the uh, where it is here. So let's go to right there. I'm actually going to increase the size because what I don't like about this image is see this line right here. <laughs> I'm going to try and get rid of that. So if I get it outside of the uh, image there, it'll be good. And let's see what that looks like. Boom. Pretty good, pretty good. I might move, uh, I might move her back just a touch. Oops, nope, can't do too much. There we go. How about like that? That way we got that line, that vertical line out, and we also got her whole face and head in the picture there. Okay, so starting to feel like we got a hero section here, right? Um, let's go ahead and give it some color to these buttons, our accent colors for the buttons, and. Um, when I look to the button there, I got a fill. And if I go here and use the color picker, the little color dropper tool, I can come over here and grab that. That's a little bit, let me see if I can get a little bit oranger. And let me take, take a look and see what that looks like. Pretty good, pretty good. And then if we change this to white, that's pretty good. I kind of like that. That's a pretty good color. This one here, uh, the, the second button, I want to style it differently because this is the one that is the higher priority button. So it's the solid one. And the wire button here, the second one, um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a stroke. And when I click the picker tool, the color picker, I'm just going to grab this color. Okay, and that stroke is one pixel wide right now. I'm just going to widen that to two. Okay, and then the fill, we can just take the fill opacity down to zero. And we'll get that button. And then I'm going to change the, the text color to that color also. So again, well, we can just grab it from right here this time. It saved it for us. So we're starting to get a hero section here, right? Um, now, the next thing I'm going to do is, let's see, this top area here is looking a little bit, there's a lot of white space around here. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was put a, uh, a sign up button up in the menu. So I'm just going to grab this button here and copy it, bring it up into here. We're going to make this a little smaller. Let's say 22. Let's see what happens if I make that 22 pixels. That looks pretty good. And let's change it to sign up. And then let's change the button size. Bring it in a little bit here. Now that looks pretty good. I think I like that. And then let's go ahead and put a, I'm going to grab, uh, let's just take this. Actually, let me just draw it by doing a, a new text thing here and then say sign in. Sign in. And what is the size? 24. What is that size? 24. I'm not crazy about that size. 
I'm going to bring that down just a touch to 22. Yeah, that looks good. Bring that down to 22 also. And the sign up button is, let's bring that down. Oh, that is already 22. All right. So we're starting to rock here. Starting to look like a hero section, right? Okay. Um, one other thing I'm just going to do to this design before we move on to it, I'm just going to give it a little accent. Just draw a line here. Come across here. And that line. You can use your arrow keys to move things around real fine amounts. Select that line and move it up with my arrow keys. You want to adjust things a small amount. Okay. And then I'm also going to change the color on it. See this oh, opacity setting here? You can see that it's black, but it has an opacity of 100. I could, I could just literally just go 30% opacity, and we'll see. We'll get a nice light line there. Right now, to check the, I, I do want to clean up alignment here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is select the whole design and go back to our columns. Oops, and turn the columns on. There we go. So if I take, I'm actually going to adjust this a little bit. Instead of 120, let's say 90. Hey, look at that! It lined up the fit fusion thing. Right, just about right on there. Bring that to that edge. Let's bring this back. There. Bring that right to that edge. So that everything's really nice and neatly clean, uh, lined up there. And then let's select both buttons here and take them both over here. Boom. Let's take the sign in and give it a... Hey, David, can you group things together to make yeah, them easier to move around? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you sure can. Yeah, I just didn't there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you certainly could. Yeah, and I got these. Let's move that over. Good. Yeah, and the way you would do that um, there, Stuart, is to grab them both and then right-click, and you'll see a group select. There it is right there, group selection. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't let we could we could do that actually. Let's just do that because if we move those buttons around at all, let's let's group them. Oop. There we go. And then if we turn off, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. Boom. Turn off our grid. Fly ball here. Boom. Not bad. Not bad, right? Um, now let's go ahead and play with this. Did you have a question, Aaron? Aaron, o, Aaron O'Toole? No? Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and play with this a little bit here. Let's go ahead and take this. I just this. thought it looked real good. What's that? I just thought it looked real good. Yeah, and we did this in about, what, tw uh, 20 minutes or so, right? <laughs> and here, from here on, we're going to fly because we're going to end up with like 10 different designs out of this. This is a basic yeah. hero here. We're going to end up with a whole bunch. Now, I have the whole frame selected. So the way you do that is you just write where it says desktop one. You just uh, hover over that and grab. Again, I'm going, to, I'm going to hold that option, and I'm just going to drag down, and we'll have a whole duplicate of this. Okay? And uh, one of the things I'm going to do is um, I'm going to increase the size of this image. Okay? Don't worry that it's going over top of the text right now, okay? We are going to send it to the back so the text runs over top of it, but even that still doesn't look good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a polygon, okay? And I'm just gonna grab a polygon here and draw. And it defaults to drawing a rectangle or a triangle. So if we get in there and, and select that, what I can do is, what do I wanna do? I want to drag this up to the top. I want to drag this down to here. Not in that very corner there. And then this whole thing, this polygon, I wanted to move it to the back also. Almost to the back, though. I'm going to do that in a second, though. 
Sometimes it does this. Okay, there. Now the fill, I want to make that white. Boom. And so we've got now that, you know, that nice kind of angled line there. The image has kind of got that angle, right? Um, I'm going to move her down slightly if I can in the image. Yeah, we can. We can grab onto the image. Let's move her down a little bit. So she's kind of looking a little more straight at the text. And then this here, we want to take, you can see that here's the higher, here's the layers over here on the left side. I'm going to take that polygon and I'm going to bring it down to just on top of that rectangle. There we go. So it's still over. See, if I bring it down all the way, it's going to be under behind the picture, the rectangle that has the picture in it. So I'm going to go just above that and then it's right there. And then we got that. Right. So now we got two designs here. Hey, David, can you rename those items in the uh, layer column in the layer yes, window? You sure can. Yeah. So do you want to do this one and call it um, abs exercise <laughs> like that? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as needed, you do that. You know, you'll kind of do that as, you, as, as you're going along. Okay, so far so good. I mean, we've got a couple of designs here. I think they're both pretty presentable. If you were to bounce those both off of a client, they could uh, say, "Yeah, I like that one better than that one," or or whatever. Right? Let's do one. Let's do one more here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take actually I'm going to take the first one because it doesn't have that triangle in it. And again, hold down Option and just grab it and pull down here, and then there we go. We got one more. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to take the image here. I'm going to pull it way down here. I'm going to take this, move it up here, and I'm going to go over here and center the text. Okay. In fact, I'm going to widen it up enough that it fits on one line. And then let's go ahead and get this in the middle of the frame. See if I can get a, sometimes it gives you a, Sometimes it gives you, there you go, we're in the middle, okay? And then let's take this guy, pull it into the middle of the frame. I'm gonna widen it up a little bit like that, like that. And again, we're gonna center that text. And then, you know, it's pretty handy. We grouped these buttons here earlier, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Let's take those and pull those up into the center here also. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> and then I'm actually going to make the, the uh, hero section. This is going to be one of those full um, viewport height hero sections. Okay. And here's our, our, our uh, rectangle. Don't worry. It's getting stretched out right now. We'll fix that in a moment. Okay. And so uh, if I go now, I have that. Um, rectangle stretched out and we stretched the image along the way there. But if I go back here and just say fill, that kind of gets rid of that, right? And actually what I want to do is I'm um, going to change that to from fill to crop. And I'm going to make her slightly bigger. Let me see. Hold down the shift key so I don't screw up with any, screw with any um, yeah, that's pretty cool. We got her pretty big there. Now there is a problem with this image. It has this line. This is like, like in the background, there's two, there's a window with two like curtains there or blinds hanging there. And so there's this gap between those in there. Let's just take a break here and take a look at that and, and see. Looks pretty good other than the fact that I'd like to get rid of that. Okay, and so the way I can do that is let's just go ahead and draw a rectangle. And I'm going to make that rectangle white. Good, we got rid of most of it. Okay, and I'm going to do one more rectangle here and get rid of all of that. And you could then later on go back and take care of this in your photo, photo editing software. Um, if you hover near the corners, you can rotate, okay? Sometimes a little arc with arrows shows up when you hover near a corner, and sometimes it doesn't, and I don't know why. 
drives me crazy. But even if it doesn't show up, if you hover just outside of the object near the corners, you can then rotate it. You can also rotate right up here with this. If I just change that to 45, it'll, it'll rotate it slightly. Oops, I wanted it negative 45, so there we go. Okay, and then I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag it and I'm going to cover up that last little spot right there in there. In there. there we go. Pretty good. And if I make that fill white, I'll bet it'll look pretty cool. Boom. Pretty good. That's a pretty good looking hero. I think I, I think of the three. Who who votes that that um, this one, the third one here is the best one? You can raise your hands if you want. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think these are completely fine. I mean, completely good. I mean, I think this is pretty basic, but it works. You know, it is tried and true web design. It works, you know, a, a headline and supporting text and a call to action image on the right. Many, many sites are that exactly that at the hero section. Um, uh, adding a little bit of visual interest by having a slanted line there is kind of nice. Um, I think this one is pretty cool. I mean, that one has some real, um, um, that one has, has some pop. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So let me say this, I would not have come up with that just on my own with thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> do you see that? Do you, do you get that? I mean, I, I'll spin my wheels forever. Here we are 25 minutes in and I've got something so far. I think it looks pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, let's go ahead and do another one. Let's change it up completely and try a whole different image and everything. I'm just going to grab again. I selected the whole frame. Um, I'm hitting the option key on my Mac here and dragging across here. And we have got another row here and let's go ahead and I'm going to center this up and then whenever I hold down the command key and then scroll with my mouse it zooms in and out by the way that's what I'm doing to do that and let's go ahead in here and um, change out this image so I'm just going to get rid of the image first off so the, the rectangle is still there we just don't have an image inside it right what happened what happened did I get rid of the rectangle I stop four comments. Where's this rectangle? Rectangle three. There it is. Again, we can right click, go to plugins, and go to unsplash. And I'm just going to type in workout. And let's go down here. I'm basically recreating right now. Uh, I went through this process earlier today and I created three different designs and I'm basically just recreating what I did earlier today. In about an hour and a half's time. Okay, so um, I'd like to get her a little bit more into the center there. So if I go here to the image and I say crop, I can actually move the image and let's move her over a little bit. And get her a little more centered up there. Good. So far, so good. Not bad. Now, one thing I would do, this line here doesn't quite work as well here. It's kind of funny because it runs partway over top of this picture or the image here. Um, in this particular design, I would get rid of that. Okay. And now let's take this and duplicate it again and come down here. Boom. And what I'd like to do with this is create the illusion that this image is actually full width, but keep her over here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to draw a rectangle here. It's going to go to this arrow this here. Come down, draw a rectangle, get it lined up with that other one. I think that's it right there. And then since it's covering over the text, I'm just going to click and say, send it back. There we go. Okay. Now, if I take this and use the color picker and I pick a color out of the image. So I pick the, use the color picker. I'm picking a color out of the image. What's going to happen is you're going to see a line between them. Well, partly because the thing didn't go to the edge, but let's get it all the way to the edge. Yeah. 
because the, the, this background is actually a gradient. The background of the image is actually a slight gradient, right? So you can see that it's darker in the top than it is near the bottom. So the way we can get around that, the way we can fix that is if you go to the fill here, you see it says solid. So it's filling in a solid color. You can also do a linear gradient. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this linear gradient over closer to the edge here. Let's get in close. The edge here. And what I'm going to do is with this one selected, I'm going to use the color picker and pick this color up near the top corner here. Okay. And then with this one selected, I'm going to use the color picker tool and pick this color down here. Okay. And then you'll see it looks pretty good down at the very bottom, pretty good near the very top, but along the way, it's not as good. So we can fill in some points. Let's do that. Okay. And with this one, I'm just going to use the color picker and grab a color right next to it. And then with this one selected, I'm going to use a color picker and pick thing right there. Boom. 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 And now, hey. <laughs> That's nice. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that, I learned that trick in the course in the design. Very course. cool. He did that. He did that. And you, you can do that same thing in any design, like Adobe Illustrator, you can do that. And like I said, I use Affinity Designer. It has the ability to add any kind of gradient tool is going to have the ability to add more color stops, you know, along the along the line. So so that's pretty cool. That's a pretty good looking uh, hero section there. OK, and then um, I think this particular design would really pop if uh, it felt like this image went to the top. That is to say, if it went all the way up and underneath the uh, the, the navigation and the, the header. OK, so let's do another version of it. So all we do is I mean, we don't lose the work we did. If we decide later on that what we're doing, what I'm about to go into, we didn't like, we still have our old one, right? So we select this. Uh, um, again, option key, and I drag down, and I've got And so what I'm going to do here is draw, I'm going to do basically the same thing again, only we're going to cover up this top part. And we're going to draw a rectangle here. Whoop. Boom. And I'm going to send it to the back. To the back. And again, if I take this and use my color picker and grab this, what we'll find is that, see, it darkens as it gets to this outer corner. It even... It actually is pretty good up to about uh, most of the way. I mean, you can kind of see a line. We'll add in a few um, color stops here. So let's go into that color there. And instead of solid, let's go linear. Okay. And this time we don't want them to be vertical. We want it to be horizontal. So let's go ahead and do this across there. And then we're going to add a few color points along the way here. Let's just add. And I'm seeing what this whole thing looks like here. So now uh, with this one, we I think that's going to end up being the same as it was. Okay, with this one, let's use the color picker and grab that color. This one, grab the color near it. This one, grab the color near it. Uh, Boom, boom, and then this darker one is the darkest of them. See if that's enough color stops. Pretty good, pretty good. So of the three, we started off with that pretty basic design, stretched it to kind of a full width and added a little more, there's a little more color in the whole thing, and then getting the whole thing to, um, being the full viewport height, including the even kind of it running up under the header, up, up and behind the header. Um, I like that one. Everybody, anybody like that one the best, or who likes the that third one? Who likes the second one the best? Anybody? I can't see all of you with this view. Try to get everybody in here. I like three and six. 
three and six. Yeah, so three, <laughs> this one, and six. I agree. I agree. Yeah, the other thing, I like, not only does this kind of have some pop that, I mean, I think when you see those those heroes that go the full height, that go under the header and all that, you know, that always just kind of pops out, you know, to me. The other thing I like about this one is, I think one of the things I don't like about this one is her elbow is really close to the top. <laughs> it's not out of the picture, but it's actually right up against it. And this one looks like there's space up there and it's not right up against it. So that's pretty cool. That's a good one. Let's go and do one more while well, we got the time here. Um, again, option key and I'm dragging across here. How far apart are we? 149. Just okay. And let's go ahead and get rid of that image. And oops, oops, I need that. I do that. Rectangle, there it is. Go there, I'm gonna right click and go to plugins and go to unsplash here. Again, I'm gonna look for workout. And I liked this. I'm gonna use this just because of the color in it. Because on this one, what I wanna do is change this color. Oop, actually cancel that. Get rid of that. I'm just going to blow this up so I can see it a little, little better here. There we go. Now let's go over and get the color picker and let's go and grab a nice blue. That's pretty good. That looks good. And then, of course, we'll make that stroke that same thing. And then we'll make that text same thing. There it is. Okay. Pretty good, pretty good. Now let's just play with this a little bit. I'll do some different kind of playing around this time. I'll come down here and duplicate this. Oops. There we go. And this time, let's go ahead and you'll notice that when you click on the rectangle, you get these little dots on the inside. You can adjust the radius. Now it's adjusting all four points of the radius right there which is interesting. <laughs> that wasn't what I wanted to do, but I don't know, kind of interesting. Um, if I hold down, is it command? Yeah, uh, no, it's not command, is it option? It is, it is option. I can just mess with one of the angles. You can also do that right over here. Um, see these, this is 340 pixels, zero, zero, zero. So you can adjust the, uh, corner radiuses of that up there also, right? Okay, that's kind of cool. I like that, okay? And then let's do a couple more with this here. Um, let's go ahead and copy that, bring it down. And I'm gonna bring that back out there. And then I'm going to put a couple of uh, polygons on top of that. And let's draw that like that. And if I go in here and select that, I can bring that to that corner, that into the corner, leave that like it is. Let's take this and duplicate it, bring it down. Look at that, right, it's perfect size. Um, Why am I not able to, oh, and then flip vertical, there we go. And then let's take the fill on this and make it white. The fill on this, white. Oops, what happened to this one? Uh, fill on that is white. There we go. Some kind of hiccup there, and that was either me or Figma doing that, I don't know. There. That headline is kind of pointing to her, I would say. And I did another version of this thing that I'm gonna do. It's basically the opposite of what we just did. And that is to take these. I'm gonna get rid of these. I'm gonna draw them again. So I'm do a polygon here. And 
in here and take this one, drag it up to the corner there, that one out, and then, and then I'm going to take this and duplicate it. And I'm going to flip it, flip vertical. There we go. And we're going to, of course, make this background white. Yes, background white. And we got that too. Oops, this one didn't go quite to the edge of the image. So we got to pull it over a little bit. There we go. So there's a few options too. Okay. So any questions? I've done a lot here. Any questions? Anybody's got somebody else to have some questions. I'm going to try and get all of you on screen here a little bit. Anybody? I have a question. Yeah, Stuart. The, um, so you placed an image in a square, in a rectangle. Can yeah. you place images in other shapes? Yes, yes. You can always make the image, the, the rectangle into a circle. But well, you could first off, you can do that up here by just using an ellipse instead, right? So if I if I drew an ellipse, let's just start another uh, frame here. I'm just gonna since we're now screwing around. Oops, what do I do? You can always undo. By the way, it's important to know how to undo. <laughs> uh, Command Z. <laughs> Very important to know how to undo. Um, Option, let me grab this and pull it down. Let's just do another one down here. And let's get rid of this rectangle completely here. And so if I did a circle, uh, you're gonna draw an ellipse. If you hit the shift key, of course, it makes it a perfect circle, right? So I could do that. And then I could again, click here and go to plugins and go to my Unsplash plugin and look for workout. And let's get, um, pick something here. Let's find something cool. Yeah, how about that? And then if I, that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> I like this. Let's bring that up to the full screen so you can all see what it looks like. I originally didn't chose that image because I didn't think I wanted to pick a grab an accent color out of the image and I didn't think that yellow would make for a good button. <laughs> but but um, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And then of course, you know, I used that same this stuff up here to draw a polygon so I could do a triangle. I have to say I haven't messed with when you do polygon it defaults to a triangle, there must be ways of making it in to a five or six point polygon or something. Uh, I think I think there is. Yeah. Is that what about a shape made with the with the pen tool? Can you I make think a shape so with the too. Pen tool? Yeah, I think so. There's a pen tool right here. Let's let's try something here. And boom. And then if I say done. Now if I take this what happens here if I do, 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 do plug in, unsplash, um, let's say a person, let's get her, see what happens. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I, I must have had, again, Command Z undoes. Okay, I must have not had this thing selected. Here we go. Let's select that, plugins. I must have had the whole thing selected. Let's go and get person. Again, let me get her, see what happens here. Uh, it looks like it did. Yeah, it did it. Hey. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And so then, you, you know, what would you do once you've done this? You've drawn something. You, 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 you know, when, once you've got a design you like, you know what images you need to create, right? Um, like if you wanted to create this, you're going to go into Photoshop and you're going to take that image of her and you're going to crop off, the, you know, make that same kind of shape and then use that as your image. And when you actually put it into WordPress, right? So that, that would be the next step is, is 
is figuring out, you know, what's a background image, what's an image, you know, um, what kind of stuff do I need to do in WordPress to make this all happen? You know, that's the next step. But, but to me, um, this gets me past a big hurdle, man. This gets me past a big, uh, you know, for me to go, geez, in a matter of a few minutes, I just started off with something. See, when I, what happens with me is whenever I do this right here, I go, oh, okay, that's pretty good, but it's kind of boring, right? And then to go from that to, okay, it's getting more interesting. Oh, that's actually pretty cool right there. You know, in a matter of a few minutes, I wouldn't do that without a tool like this where you just like iterate and try out stuff and try out stuff. And you can always just not use the thing, you know, you can make lots of different attempts. Um, but I think in, in under an hour here, we've got a whole bunch of things that you can choose from, right? And, you know, you're all out of each column, I think you'll pick one that you like the most. I think we all agreed that this seems to be the best out of that column. Um, I, I think that's when you use it, best utilizes that image too, because even though the image is, I think, rectangular in the in the portrait position, position, the subject of the image is kind of she's landscape, <laughs> right? So so this utilizes the image, I think, best. You know, you, you know, if you took this image here, you would need to take it into your photo editing software and create extend the background on it, right, out to here. Right. And, and, and maybe up above, too, if you wanted to make it such that it, it goes up to the top of the um, screen. Or here, you know, you would take that image and you would, I mean, you can do that in CSS right here, this rounding of this corner, that can be done. You know, you round that corner, and if you made that a background image and round it off that corner, that's what that's going to look like, right? That right there. This, you'd probably want to just take into your photo editing software and either of these two and 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 literally draw the rectangles on top of it just like like I just did right or somehow take that section of it that image and make it transparent you know mark it as transparent in your in your you know in, in photoshop or whatever but um you know that's uh uh pretty quick and easy if you get proficient with this with uh with figma um you know you can brainstorm really fast that's what that's what I really like about it um, so any comments on it, questions or comments? David? Yes. I was trying to use Figma to do, um, to figure out how links work. I didn't really mess with it too much. But, yeah. Um, can you like build a site and then see kind of the flow? Yeah, you, you can. Yeah. That's actually okay. what you know, the, the, so, so what we've done here, what, I, what the, my interest in, in Figma was really to be able to do this. Because if I could get yeah. past the, the designer's block at the beginning, and it's stressful. I mean, sometimes I, I don't even feel like I'm spinning my wheels. I'm just stuck. No. <laughs> I'm really stuck. So this was my interest in it was to be able to brainstorm lots of ideas and just like create right. a copy of it, change it around a little bit. And eventually as you go, you get to something that you like. Um, the other thing about these packages, Figma and XD, is the ability to prototype. And they yeah. call that, what you're asking is they call it prototyping, okay? And so what we can do is, let's go ahead and do that on one of these, um, um, on this one here that we just kind of created here for, uh, oops, I'm gonna move this here. Um, what we can do is, if I select this text and this, and I say up here, this little try, this little diamond shape up here, you'll notice the first thing under there is create component. Okay, so as soon as we create a component, it turns purple in its outline whenever we 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 uh, highlight it, right? And what we can do is with a component, you can add a variant. Okay, and so if you go up here to see this plus sign, it says add variant. Okay, and what we're gonna do is in this variant here, so you'll notice over here on the right, if I click the top button here, the get top get fit button, it says property one default. And then it says uh, here, it says variant two. I'm gonna change the name of that to hover, okay? And so now we have two things, default and hover, okay? So this one here you'll notice is default, this one here is hover. 
and then what we want to do is take this this uh i'm going to move her out of the way <laughs> okay take the um this one here and i'm going to change the color of it slightly so that when you hover over it, it gets a little bit lighter i actually like my buttons to get darker when you hover over them I seem to be in the minority with that but anyway you see how that's darker right and then what i can do here is i can go to prototype and you see how it has when i have this one this top button it's like it has this little plus the little plus right there what i can do is click on that and drag down to this one and you see how there's a line now connecting this button to this one and we might say well when does that happen and up here the interaction is it defaults to on click i'm going to change that to while hovering okay now um, usually a little bit confusing when you create a component you actually want to take it and then drag it off the screen off of your your um, uh, canvas okay and when you create a component it shows up in here under assets this is confusing by the way i i i would not have figured this all out without having taken the course that I took. but it isn't much more than what i'm about to say at the same time so it isn't a ton to know okay so if we take this and drag it in okay there it is okay so this component is now uh in here right is it now in the uh frame if we select this and we hit the little play button see the little play button up here that is going to get brain open up another window and if we go in the images will fill in a second there you go and if I go and hover over that, you see how it actually does it. Right. Cool. So that's in the play button there. I'm going to, um, and, that, and, if, and if you update this, this um, component here, if we made it so that this thing, go back to design, see, I was on prototype. So generally, when you want to model interactivity among things, button hovers, or when I click this button, I want it to go to this page, whatever um you are under this prototyping tab or over here on the right okay yeah hey but, david i don't know if anyone else uh has the problem i'm not seeing any changes i just have i just see the dark button uh you i i just i deleted the uh the play thing here so if i go back to play okay is this oh i think what's happening is this um I'm not sharing this window. It comes up Got in another it. window. Sorry. Got it. Oh, yeah, it's it no big deal. It's just, I'm not sharing it. Yeah, yeah, I understand what's going on. Just couldn't see anything. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thanks for pointing that out. I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't aware that it wasn't showing that. Um, I wonder if I new share. Can I go and share this? Let's share that. Okay. Now you're seeing. Can you see it now? There you go. Yep. There you go. There you go. So, and I do want to go back to the other one though, because that's where we're doing our work. So that's the window in which it shows the the interactions. Okay. And now you're back to seeing the original window. Is that right? Or no? Uh, we actually see your desktop. This is the one we want. That's it. Got it now. You back to my window now. Should be. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. So that that's how you uh, maybe do it. now in in when you're inside of Figma doing where you're doing the work, it won't show that hover effect. You have to hit this little play button to show a prototype of that of the page. Does that answer your question, there, uh, Aaron? You're muted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of. It does. Yeah, I think I, the other thing you wanted you, you 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 what you said was you know be able to make it go when you click a button it goes to another page, right? Yeah, I don't like know. Do I don't too. know why I always want to play with that. I want so, to see. So the way the way you would do that would be um, so we cr would create another interaction here on this, and we would add an interaction, and we would add an on a click. We would want to, let's say, go to, I think what we would do would be, we would go up to that page. So if you click that button, it's gonna to go to this other one. Oh, cool. Okay, so see the arrow? 
Yeah, that's cool. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, when you do a when you do a site with lots of links, the arrows are crazy. <laughs> right, but now if you go to play, if, it'll show all that, right? Yeah. So if we go and play, so I'll have to go and go here, and that's play, and it came up here. Let me just see if it works before I actually share that screen. <laughs> Hey, it worked. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, I'm going to close that. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to play. And then I'm going to change the screen I'm sharing. So new share. I'm going to go. I think this is it. I think that's, yeah, that's it. Now, if I click this, so you see the hover effect is working. Right. And also, if I click it, it goes to that other page. That's cool. I love yeah, it. So that, that's how you do that stuff in there. So, so that's you hit on what kind of the key differences are. I'm going to go back to my other one there. I was doing the, doing the work. Share that. Um, you know, teams use this, right? If you're developing a complex website, yeah, yeah. you know, teams people, and, and then if you have beyond the free account, because <laughs> this is a free. I'm everything I'm doing here is inside my free Figma account. If you have one of the paid tiers, you can. You know, and the other person has a paid tier, you guys can collaborate on things. And I can say, hey, I've made it flow like this because people, you know, designers often want to check out like the flow, like, okay, the user's going to click this and then they're going to go here and then they're going to go here and then eventually go to this form, you know, and they want to be able to model all that inside there so that when they hand it over to the designers, they get exactly what they want, you know. Uh, my, my interest in it isn't as much that. My interest in it is much more of just being able to brainstorm ideas. Right. But then you know, eventually but, you will build it. Right. Eventually I would then take that. So, you know, I can, it's pretty clear to me how to take, say, for example, this one, this one that we said we yeah. all kind of like, that one's pretty straightforward to implement in WordPress. It looks yeah. pretty cool, but it's yeah. pretty straightforward. It's just plain a center-aligned headline, a center, some more center-aligned text, a couple of call to action buttons, and then you could put yeah. the picture below it. And that one, and this is even fairly responsive right out of the box. Oh, yeah, you that was that in WordPress. Question. That whole thing's going to be responsive pretty nicely, yeah. right? Without David, really much effort. Yeah. Have you, or do you know anybody that's um, done the export to HTML to like actually? Because I was reading about that, you can actually convert the Figma designs into an a HTML ready format, basically like sort of pop it out, export it out into HTML. Mm -hmm. have, you, do you, have, you, does, have you done that? Has anyone I, done that? I haven't done it. It wasn't in the course uh, that I took and um, I haven't done it. I'd be highly skeptical of what you get, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Uh, do you. Do you know that it can be done? I, I've been reading up on it, yeah, and it seems to be the the new sort of the next step in Figma's evolution, um, which I suspect might be why Adobe invested in it, but just kind of an easy, not so much like a content management system, but to bridge that gap between yeah. exporting design to development to actually like sort of, there's a plugin, basically. I did read that there is a plugin yeah. um, that you can convert it from basically Figma to um, HTML, but I just, I, I didn't know any, if anybody has done it, if, if it's buggy or I don't know. Well, uh, I just went into, did you see what I did? You probably didn't see what I did. I'm gonna close out of this. I just right clicked anywhere, um, really. And I went to plugins and then I went to uh, find more plugins. Yeah. She ended up looking, at, looking for plugins and I typed in HTML. And there is an HTML generator. <laughs> uh, rent, what's it say it does? Let's click on it real quick here. HTML generator renders any selection into its HTML equivalent with an associated CSS. All, indent, all indented and separated for your copy and paste. Speed up your conversion process faster. So there's something there. Yeah, I haven't tried it. But um, yeah, actually, what you're saying might explain it. If if Figma were close to that, and they and, and it were going to be really revolutionary, that might have been what sparked Adobe's interest in it, and, and then commanded twenty billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't done that. I'd be I'd be a little bit suspicious of how accurate it would be. To be honest with you, hang on, my guys. I'm going to close my door here for one second.
that. Um, yeah, I mean, each of these things, you see, there's a, um, you're hitting on responsiveness. So if I take this and narrow it, it starts to wrap, right? Notice it does not push the text below it down, right? It just kind of runs over top of it, right? It's back to centered here. There we go. Um, there are ways, see it has these constraints to the left and right. So if I take this window and pull it in, you'll notice that it doesn't really move much, but if I do this one, it does. See how the text moves when I'm moving that one? Because it's constrained, there's these constraints, it's constrained to the, to the top and left. You can make it also left and right so that if I pull this in, oops, grab the edge of the window, pull this in, it starts to collapse. Or if I pull this in, it does too. Again, I haven't set it up such that it uh, pushes this text down. You have to do some things to get it to be responsive inside of Figma to really, for it to really look like it's responsive. You have to mess with some things. There's these constraints here. So I set this up in left and right, and it's to the top. And then pull this up. You have to take this and this and do an auto layout believe. And then if I take this and start to pull it in, oh, and then I have to make this um, a fill container. There's a whole bunch of steps. There was a part of the course, I would say it was the most confusing and difficult part of the course uh, when he talked about all this responsiveness stuff. You have to set up, uh, there's a decent amount of setting up things on each element in order to get things to really look responsive here. I don't know if I've um, showed that, but there's this, these constraints here tell you, well, which edge should it respond to? Should it respond to the left edge moving in or should it respond to the right edge moving in or either one of them? Um, and then you have to make the height of the container be, um, hug contents, and then whenever I do move this in, there, see, see what happened there? Now the text that's below it, this supporting text, this conventional fitness doesn't work thing, that actually starts to, oops, what am I doing here? Oops. That actually gets pushed down. Now I didn't do anything to these buttons below in order to push them down. I have to include those in this auto layout. Okay. So there's a, there's a number of things to do in order to make it really responsive. Um, David, another quick question. Yeah, yeah. So you know how we can um, uh, affect the different screen views, like basically like on in WordPress and I use Elementor, for example, I can toggle from desktop tablet to mobile. Can you do that? Like is that, I assume that's probably what that function helps with, but is that, do you have to basically, are you creating basically like flat 2D models of all of those, or is there a way that these compress and you can trigger those sort of you can, developers? You can trigger those, those responsive uh, yeah. changes. Yeah, you can do, generally, I think what you'd find is a designer would do a desktop design, a tablet design, and a mobile design. You would draw up all three. So, so let's go to the, you know, down here. And if we took the, well, let's go and create um, a, ta a, a, um, um, a mobile design. Okay. And let's do that with, uh, let's do that with like, say this one. Okay. This one here. Um, what I would do would be, I'll go over here and uh, th this first page, it's called page one. I wonder if I can change the name of that. Oh, there it is. Change page one. Let's go to desktop designs. There, and then I'm going to add another page here. We're going to call this mobile. And I'm going to I'm going to skip tablet for now. Just just go you know, do do a mobile design, okay? And on this page, what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to this page. I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to copy it. Just Command C, and I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to um, paste it. Command V. 
And then next to it, I'm gonna create a new frame. And in this frame, I'm gonna call this one an iPhone 14 Pro Max. <laughs> the new iPhone, the big one. Okay, and we can even make it a little longer. Like that, okay. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, what I would do would be take this and drag it over into here. And I would change the font size down to 48, let's say. I'm gonna bring this in so it fits inside of here. I'm gonna create a new grid, a layout grid, out of grid, boom. Make it columns, make it four columns, give it a 30 pixels on the side, boom. And then I'm gonna bring that right up to that edge. Bring this up to the edge there. Uh, I'm gonna center align this text, boom. And I'm gonna make it slightly smaller so that I can try to get the fitness standards on one line. Let's see if that'll work. Let's see if this happens, if that'll work. Nah. Uh, let's see if uh, that's a little small. It's a little smaller than I'd like it to be. Let's see if 40 does it. Ah, shoot. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to change these just slightly because I want to get those on the one line. This grid here, make this just 20. And then let's go back here, bring this back out here. There we go. And there. Okay, there's that. Let's go and grab this text. Again, option and then drag and we can bring it over into here. Boom, I'm gonna bring it into there. Bring it up a little bit, center it. And I'm gonna say just 20 pixels is probably gonna be good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's get rid of the uh, grid for the moment. There we go. And then let's go ahead and grab this again. Option and drag it here. I'm going to bring it right to there. Shift so that I don't distort the image. Right to there. Boom. I'm just going to bring this bottom of this up because it doesn't, it'll look less distracting for us. Cool. And then I'm going to grab the uh, icon here, or I'm um, sorry, our logo. Drag it across make it slightly smaller. What happens if we do that? That's pretty good. And then I do want to have a, a hamburger menu. So I'm gonna go down to my plugins here. It's good that we're doing this because now Iconify is another plugin where you can get all kinds of icons, right? And um, I happen to have it, it happened to already be on menu. <laughs> Last time I used it, it was doing that. And let's go ahead and grab a fancy menu, like maybe this one. Pull it in to the design. And here it is. Sometimes it puts it in a weird spot. Let's take it there. Let's make that slightly bigger. That's a little bigger than we'd like it to be. Or is it? Well, that's not bad. Maybe a little smaller. Maybe just a hair smaller. That looks pretty good. And then, um, I want to make a little more space in here. Let's take this rectangle and pull it down a little bit. That looks pretty good. That's one thing. And then let's go ahead and create a duplicate there. And I actually want to create a rectangle that I'm going to put on top of this. Oops, what did I do? Create a rectangle here. And put it right there. Drag it down over top of all this stuff. Um, send it to the back. And then we are going to do the fill here. We're gonna do our, our um, trick with the um, gradient. And I'm gonna select this one, use the color picker and grab that color. This one, I'm gonna use the color picker and grab that one but we still have those lines there so let's go back there our gradient let's add a couple of uh, the color changes a lot near this right edge so i'm going to add extra points along there actually it looks like it will go a little more sparse there 
So if we go here, color picker, grab that, go here, color picker, that. So pretty good. I like that Thank one. Thank you. Thanks. So, so you would basically go through what you want it to look like in each of them. You can make, you can make them somewhat responsive by doing what I was showing earlier within each. But if you wanted to have, say, a four column thing, suppose you had a feature section that had four columns in it, and you wanted to make it such that, oh, at this tablet width, I want that to switch to two and two. I, I I don't think there's a way to do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm only a couple months into Figma. I'm not an expert, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, What's the recommended way to share this with clients? That's like, you know, easy. Like, do you just export it as like a PDF? Is there like a shareable interactive? I believe there is. I, I believe here you can, uh, is there an export or save as? You can, I know that you can, I mean, you can always send the person the, the link to your, to, to the artboard that you've just created and you can go through them with them. Okay. You could do that. Um, I believe if you say, well, I, I'm pretty sure this is the one I really like, you know, you can take this one and there is a way to save it as, I know that you can copy it as a PNG. See right here? Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. You can copy it as a PNG. And I think what you would do would be then go into Illustrator or whatever that is and then paste it. Got and it. You got the image. You, you know, there, there ought to be a way to just export. But I, 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 and I'll bet there is, and I just don't know. Okay. No worries. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, you could also just, then you got an image of the hero section and send it to somebody and say, hey, what do you think? Right. <laughs> right. Right. All right. Cool. Um, Thank you. Yeah. But, and, and, and like I say, if we wanted to make this collapse, like there's no way to make this, this design that's on the screen right now, collapse into the text up top and the, and the picture down below. I don't know of a way to do that. He didn't, he definitely didn't do that in the course. And, and I don't think there is. I think within, if you say, well, I want it to be responsive down to a certain point. When it gets to a certain width, I'm going to basically switch over to my tablet design. Right. And then you have your tablet design you do. And, you know, so. Um, you probably just have like in your, you know, developer notes, you just have the break point, like desired break point, And then yeah. just leave that. Okay. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and there's lots of stuff I didn't talk about. There's way you can save, like, like this is your, um, you, you know, you can save a color palette and stuff like that. I didn't get into all that, but, um, um, but that's the way I would do the like the mobile design. I would take one of the desktop designs, copy it, create a new page. You don't have to. You can do. You can go back to your all in this one thing, all on this one page. We can just go ahead and create a new thing here, a new frame, and make an iPhone thing right here. You know, you can do it. You can do it all in one place. It's nice to organize it over here into the desktop designs and the mobile designs. And the only reason this is here is just so we can drag and drop things from it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, it's going back to your interactivity stuff, Aaron. You can make it so that when you click on this hamburger menu, that a menu slides out from the right side. You know, like I said, my interest is really in being able to do what we did here, which is brainstorm and and play around i thought what was cool about it is you could set up colors and fonts and things like that and kind of make those decisions in figma i thought was cool yeah yeah and 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 um so like for any text you know you can create a, a text style yeah so you can say you can create a text style and call it paragraph Right. You can create a textile and call it heading one, and another textile and call it heading two and heading three, or subheadline text or whatever. You know, you can create a, or or button text or hyperlink text or whatever. Um, and so you that, so then you can always just select those. And if you were to ever go and change what that one is, it changes everywhere. I like that. 
Yeah, so I didn't get into all that stuff. But, That's okay. You um, did really great, David. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, does anybody think that this might give them, you know, uh, a, a breakthrough in their ability to design? From yes. Scratch, starting starting from scratch. And, yes. Yeah. 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 You can get pretty familiar with it. Pretty. It's not, if, especially if you've used drawing program. I mean, I mean, if you've used Illustrator or like I say, I use Affinity Designer or or any of those things. You know, there's certain things that, like like I said, undoing things Command Z. A lot of apps have it Command Z to undo, <laughs> right? Or um, you know, there's a lot of similarities. Let me say that. So if you've done any of that, anything in any drawing packages, there's a lot of similarities here. And um, um, I did want to make sure I put a few things into the into the chat, a few links. That I want to in, put into the chat. And the first one is the course that I took is called designcourse.com. Okay. That's the first link. Now, what that is, is I want to go here. This is it here. Okay. Um, it's funny. He just released this CSS course literally a couple days ago. Um, it's actually not complete, but if you buy it now, you get a discount. So he's actually like two months away from finishing it, but he's got a deal where if you buy it now, you get a discount. This is the one I took, the UI UX course. It's a hundred bucks, it's 99 bucks. Um, and uh, this is the guy, if you've seen him on YouTube, he's got a pretty prominent uh, YouTube channel, mostly centered around design. Occasionally he delves into HTML and CSS every once in a while. Most of the time he's talking design though. But this is cool, This this course, is the follow on the CSS course is the follow on to the UI UX course. And so that is okay, given a Figma design, how do you then convert that into HTML and CSS? Right? Because you know, you've got to look at this stuff and go, well, what it what in here, what in here is background image and what in here is image? What can I do with CSS with just like a gradient, you know, or or whatever, right? So um Certainly, if you get things that are more complicated, more complex designs, it becomes more tricky, more and more tricky on how exactly you're going to get that into CSS. You know, some of the designs he does on his channel, I look at them and I go, I can think of a few ways of trying to do that in CSS, and I'd have to try them to see <laughs> which one, you know. <laughs> you know, so I, I think that that follow-up course that he's got coming out here would, would be pretty cool, pretty cool course. So uh, design course, Gary Simon is the guy here. Uh, his YouTube channel is called Design Course. Also, I think he's close to a million subs on his channel. It's a pretty big channel. Uh, like I say, he's not a WordPress guy so so much, but he uh, for design skills, it's really good. Um, and then I also um, I'm gonna link. I'm gonna put this video. This is a 43 minute <laughs> tutorial on Figma. It'll get you started pretty fast. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the um, chat also. Um, this is a, a channel called Flux Academy. And um, I really like these guys for design. They're, they are actually not WordPressers, okay? They, are, um, they use Webflow, if you've heard of Webflow. It's a relatively new uh, um, CMS. Um, pretty fancy in terms of like animations and interactions that you can do with Webflow, um, but um, for basic design knowledge, I think these guys are really good. The Flux Academy ch YouTube channel is really good for design. I've learned a lot from them. Um, so between these two, these are my kind of my go-to resources for design, the Gary, Gary Simon design. Hey David, design. it's running, to be there for something's a running on your computer. Yes. There, thanks. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't think that was me, because I didn't do anything. <laughs> So, um, um, yeah, the, and, and so, you know, even in this course, the other thing you get out of this course is he goes through his design fundamentals. There's like seven fundamentals of design in the course, uh, typography, color, contrast, white space, visual hierarchy. Um, how many did I name? <laughs> anyway, anyway, it, it's kind of cool. It gives you a good eye, it really develops your eye and kind of gives you things to go to when a, when, a, when the design just doesn't feel right to you. You know, it's really cool. It's a really good course, really good course. Um, 
I had something else I wanted to mention too. Everybody's been to, is everybody just during the hour here gone to the figma.com website? So oh, I'm logged in. So let me log out so I can just go to the, there it is. So you can see that a lot of it is really designed for collaboration. Nothing great is made alone, it's built alone, you know. Um, and so, it's really made for teams to work together, but but it also is a fantastic brainstorming place. So, any questions? I think you did a great job. Oh, thank I, you. I heard about this a long time ago. I don't know if anybody else follows Paul Boag, B-O-A-G. He's a guy in Britain, but he mentioned Figma a long time ago for, you know, he likes to have design um, standards for his sites, you know, this yeah. color, that font, stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. Um, and so when you, if you do the course, if you do decide to do the course, there's exercises that he gives you along the way. Every, he'll do a few videos and then he'll give you an exercise to do. Sometimes there's just some questions to answer. And then sometimes there's, um, he go, wants you to go into Figma and generate something. And I recommend that as you're doing the course as you're watching the videos that you actually do it along with him. He does give you starter files and he says it's optional if you want to follow along with me and do it as I'm doing it. I oh, The whole course I had one window open and another window open, him playing in one, and, and me and Figma doing exactly what he's doing and pausing the video. So every 20 minute video actually took a good 40 <laughs> you know, to do. But these are all the stuff, these were all the things I did from the, from the course. Is wow. all I did. I mean, it's wow. like a lot of stuff. That's yeah. great. Like this was one of them. This was one of the designs. Where's the image coming That's up? Great. There? there you go. Um, oops. Oops. I didn't want to do that. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, should do that. There we go. Um, yeah, so um, that's all I got, guys. Was that helpful? Thank you, David. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, good. that was very nice. Well done. Oh, thank you. I, I actually, so what I did for you, I just is something I did earlier today. I went through and created all those designs earlier today, um, this morning, and yeah, and, and really, it's it's a it's incredible how fast you can work. I mean, you know, you have nothing, and then all of a sudden you've got. 12 designs you know, in a matter of you know, an hour and a half or so so um thank you yeah yeah it looks like uh it's combining indesign with illustrator and maybe a little bit of photoshop if you dig in a little bit deeper into one package just little bits of everything the interface looks really familiar yeah it's yeah nice. when, I, when i've seen an xd at adobe's package is experience designer, I believe is what that stands for. Um, I, it looks, Figma and it look pretty close, <laughs> you know, yeah. And uh, yeah, I really wonder if it was it Whitney that said that there would, might be a way to convert straight to HTML and CSS mm -hmm. and all. And yeah, if, if Figma is close to that, Adobe might've been getting nervous <laughs> <laughs> and coughed up some money. <coughs> so anyway. Uh, all right, guys. Well, thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks, Great. David. Yeah. 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 Thanks, David. Thanks, everybody. That was fun.